So welcome everyone to the conference of the Anthroposophical Society in Southern Africa. We are busy exploring the foundation stone and have been going through a series of interviews with people who work with the, the verse in different ways. Um, tonight we have a guest called um, Wendy Lilia. She grew up on a sugar farm in KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa and she went to university in Johannesburg at this to study science. After graduating with a BSc, she found a job at Pharma Natura in the quality control labor laboratory. She, that's where she encountered anthroposophy for the first time. And at Pharma Natura, she was also given the opportunity, opportunity to work at both Walida and Walla in Germany. She later moved to Wellington to take over the biodynamic farm Blow Blomakis Kluf from Gian Malherber. So we are um, welcoming you, Wendy, to, to join us tonight. We want to explore and compare the, the foundation stone to a biodynamic farm organism. So using your, your knowledge and experience with biodynamic farming. But I suppose before we get into that, like I always want to know is how did you come, if you could tell us the story about how you came to anthroposophy in general and the foundation stone in particular. It'd be a lovely place for us to start. So welcome. Thanks, Delana, and um, uh, good evening to everybody. Um, yeah, I think, Delana, you've given my background. Um, pretty descriptively. So um, yeah, I grew up not in, in, with a, con in a very conventional family, no anthroposophy at all. Uh, went to a conventional school and uh, studied at WITS and did science simply because, not because I felt I wanted to, but because that was what I was good at at school. Um, not knowing what I really wanted to do. And all the way through my studies always had the feeling that I didn't quite fit, um, that I wanted to do something a little bit more artistic, and yet I didn't fit into the art uh, faculty either. That also didn't seem to work. Um, and came out of university still with that feeling of, of um, searching for something and not having no idea what I was searching for. Um, when I finished my studies, um, my dad, who had been paying for my studies, paying for my board and lodging, cut those that payment, and I had to desperately find a job in order to carry on living. And I literally just just phoned um, companies in Johannesburg, one after the other, seeing uh, who had work for me. And um, I spoke to Brian Turner, those from Johannesburg will remember Brian Turner, from Pharma Natura, and he gave me my job, he gave me my first job in the laboratory at Pharma Natura. And um, as you probably all know, Pharma Natura was started by Guy Wertheim Ames, who died recently, very, very famous, notorious man, notoriously famous man. Um, so I suppose I, I should thank him for, for um, my encountering anthroposophy because that's where in fact I did. Um, at Pharma Natura they were making the Rolida and the Bala remedies. They also had a farm where they were growing the herbs to make the tinctures. So I had a little bit of connection with biodynamics there as well. And of course, thanks to Peter Kreft who was working at Pharma Natura at the time, who did study groups. And, um, and I suppose, as they say, there was no turning back. That's how it all started. So that's my introduction. And then the foundation stone, how did you come across that? I suppose anybody who, who works with anthroposophy and who studies anthroposophy can't not have the foundation stone as part of their life. Um, I've, it's always been there. Um, I've done some study groups with the foundation stone and um, and I suppose um, once I, I started farming, when I took over this farm in, in the Cape, uh, Blo Blomicki's Kloof, it became particularly alive for me because it is so closely connected 
to to the farm um, and to farming, I think, and to life on on a, on a farm. Yeah, which is what I can't wait to get into. So, so maybe just because this is with a bit of an introduction to some people who may be new to anthroposophy, is could you explain a bit um, from your bi biodynamic farming background, like what is biodynamic farming? What do we mean by it? Yes, sure. Okay, so I see in the in the audience some uh, biodynamic farmers. So please forgive me if I repeat myself. But for those of you who who don't know. Um, so biodynamic farming is a, is a method of farming that was introduced by Rudolf Steiner, of course. Um, and I suppose in a nutshell, it's, it's farming that incorporates the cosmic world, conscious incorporation of the cosmic world um, and cosmic forces in the day-to-day -day farming. So um, practically what this means is... Um, for example, we have the biodynamic planting calendar, um, which takes into account not only the moon phases, but also um, the, the, the movement of the planets within the constellations, the starry constellations, and how these forces affect um, the, the earth and the plants that we grow and our animals and everything that we, we do on the farm. So following this calendar, what everything we do, we prune, we plant, we transplant, we harvest, we follow everything according to the calendar, um, bearing and, and, tr and also trying to do this consciously. This is also a big, big part of biodynamic farming, um, where we, we really try to understand what these forces are and how they work and how they affect everything that we do. Um, a big part, of course, also is the biodynamic preparations. These are intrinsically linked to the cosmic forces, to the spiritual world. Um, Rudolf Steiner describes them and described them in detail in his agriculture course. And a lot of research has been done since then on these. Um, I think uh, the most common one, I suppose, is the preparation 500, the cow horn manure prep. Um, then you have the preparation five, 501, the silica spray, uh, and then the compost preps, um, the, the, the six different preparations that are made with herbs and using animal organs buried in the ground, all very, on the one hand, very material, earthly substances, um, but on the other hand, absolutely spiritual substances connected to the cosmos and bringing in the cosmic forces using the rhythms of the the earth the seasons um, and the temperatures um, to to create to, like an alchemical process to create something new that we then use in our farming practice thanks okay. Tiana. So then let's go into how, how they, you link them now. How is the foundation stone relevant then in the practice of biodynamic farming? So Rudolf Steiner talks about um, the farm as um, that when you, when you have a biodynamic farm that you are trying to create a farm organism. And I'm just going to quickly share the screen and um, give you the quote. So this is the quote from, from the agriculture course um, where Steiner, of course, uh, towards the end of his life, Rudolf Steiner was asked to talk about agriculture and um, from a series of lectures, he, um, a book was published on, on um, biodynamic farming and in this book he quotes um, a farm comes closest to its own essence when it can be conceived of as a kind of independent individuality, a self-contained entity. In reality, every farm ought to aspire to the stage of being a self-contained individuality. So now what does this mean? Um, so I'm going to go a little bit into what, what this farm organism, this individuality is, and then I will link it to the to the, the foundation stone verse. OK. 
Okay. I'm going to do the screen again. So um, those of you who have been or are involved in the medical world will probably know this picture um, where Steiner talks about the inverted man, um, where we, we have the plant um, and the different parts of the plant, the root system, the leaf system and the flower um, or the fruit um, linked to uh, connected if one connects it to, to man, the man is inverted. So you imagine, if you imagine like the picture of a man, his head is buried in the ground, um, his, his arms and heart and uh, his arms sticking up out of the ground here and his limbs sticking up, pointing into the air. So um, the, uh, the nerve, the head being underground, the nerve sense system is linked to the root. Uh, the heart, the lungs, the rhythmic system is linked to the leaves and the stem and the metabolic limb system is linked to the, the flower and the fruit. So this is, this is when one uh, compares man or uses a plant as a healing substance or for nutrition, um, you look at this picture. Now with a, with a, a farm, um, I'm going to share again. you have the same sort of idea, um, except instead of, with, instead of comparing these three systems to a plant, Rudolf Steiner compares them to the whole farm. So the farm organism is actually, the, the skin of this organism that you are working with on a farm is the boundary of your farm, your fence around your farm. That's the skin. And then within the skin you have, um, again, the inverted man picture. So um, below the ground, you have the head, which is the mineral. So the head is kind of everything down below. So the nerve sense system is the mineral, the earth, deep down. Above the ground, you have everything that's happening on your farm, all the workings. You have the animals, you have the crops, you have man, um, you have the seasons, you have the sun, the planets, all the, the working. And this is the, the metabolic limb system, the will forces, the, the, the doing part. And now something not quite so obvious is the rhythmic system, the, the heart. And that, Rudolf Steiner says, is the humus layer, H-U-M-U-S. And that's this very thin layer just below the surface of the earth, which is the living layer and which allows for the movement um, between the, the below earth and above earth from the planets down into the earth, from deep down the mineral world up to the plants and to the animals and a constant moving up and down. So that's your rhythmic system. So in your, in your farm organism, you have your nerve sense system, your thinking, you have your metabolic limb system, your movement, and you have your uh, rhythmic system, which is the humus layer. Now, when I look at, of course, as you you've probably all um, realize now when I look at the, the foundation stone verses, we have in the beginning, we have the first verse, the first part of the foundation stone is um, the metabolic limb system. The middle, the, the middle part is the, uh, the rhythmic system. And then the last part is the the head. So you have the thinking, the feeling, and the willing. And in so far as, as any, everything relates to everything, I mean, I think one can do that with anything. You can relate thinking and thinking, feeling, and willing this picture to just about anything. But somehow, for me, working on a farm, reading this, it just brings this 
absolutely beautiful picture of this farm organism in a very poetic and deeply, deeply spiritual way. And without going into it in, in, in incredible detail, because I think you've all studied this and you're looking at it in different ways, but there's certain words that you can just, that I'm just going to pick out, which, you know, is, is a farm. It's, it's farming. It's just, it's all there. So if I start with the first verse, um, we're now looking at the, the, the limb, the metabolic limb system, the doing of the farm, the willing of the farm, everything above ground. Bear thee through the world of space. Everything is happening in the world of space. Where in the wielding world creator life, all the happenings above ground, thou will truly live. The living, the happening is happening above, above ground. Begetting life in the depths of worlds, begetting life, reproduction, the animals, the, the giving birth, the, um, everything is happening um, above ground. Let this ring out in the heights. And then, of course, the elemental world, the spirits hear it in the east, the west, the north, and the south. So to me, just reading that gives me a lovely picture of what's happening above ground. And if I then connect it to the to the, the biodynamic preparations, um, this, this verse, this, these two, the beginning, um, very much gives a picture of the preparation 501, the, the silica spray prep. Now the silica prep is one of the two um, biodynamic sprays that you spray on your farm. Um, the 501 is the silica where you, where you are taking silica the quartz crystal, and you are grinding it down to a very, 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 very fine powder and taking a tiny amount, um, a teaspoon tip per hectare, tiny, tiny amount. So it's incredibly, incredibly strong. All those um, caught up warmth and light forces that are held, that were held in that quartz crystal have been released and um, you take that tiny little bit and stir it rhythmically. Again, the rhythm is so important on a farm and also in this verse, the rhythm of the, of the words is so important. Um, the, you stir it rhythmically for an hour and then you spray it in a fine mist over the top of your crop where, where your seeding and your fruiting is happening, where your, where your fruit um, uh, where seed is happening, where, where the flowering and the fruiting is happening. And again, of course, this is where the metabolic limb system lives in, in that area. So the 501 particularly lives here. And then if I have to think of the, the, um, the sulfur, we, of course, in alchemy and in farming, we work a lot with the sulfur, the sal and the salt, the salt and the sulfur, the two, the, the two polar opposites, so it was a mercury in between, and this one would be very much fire, um, which is the fruiting, um, the, the, the element of fire comes in with fruiting and flowering. So here you would have your sulfur principle. I want to now move on to the last one because the middle one is quite important. Uh, I'd like to end off with the middle one, but the last one then is the head. Um, so if you look at the last verse, soul of man, thou livest in the resting head. Here again, as opposed to the, the, the first one with the moving, the wielding, the begetting life, everything happening here, we have resting the head. And if we think of the earth underground, it is in a state of rest, the mineral world deep down in the earth. And it's dark. And if I pick out the words here again, the resting head, which from the ground of the eternal and the thoughts of worlds in quietness, as opposed to the, the, the above ground, the sounds, the doing, the happening down below, there's a quietness, very much a reflection of the thinking in the head. And then, of course, then from the ground of the spirit in man. Um, then linking the below ground to the 
to the, um, the preparations. Here, I would, I would think about the compost preparations because the compost preparations are all buried. In fact, all the preparations are buried underground, um, taking in those forces, those thinking forces that are underground, which in fact are forces coming up from the heavens. Um, so all the preparations buried underground um, in, in this mineral and salt world. Now we go to Mercury, which is the middle realm. Now, um, the, the middle realm is, it would be the humus layer. Now the humus layer, I'm going to share the screen quickly with you. Um, the humus layer is this very thin layer very small compared to the other two layers, but probably the most important, particularly in our world today. Um, the humus layer is that layer that's where all the living, where the life and the fertility lives. And in biodynamic farming, this is one of our tasks, is to, to create a bigger and bigger humus layer. This is what the biodynamic preps do, and in particularly preparation 500, the cow horn manure prep. So use of the correct use of the biodynamic preparation 500, which for those who don't know is cow manure, which you've taken fresh cow manure from a lactating cow. You've, you've placed it into a cow horn and you've buried it underground during the winter months and lifted it up in spring. And there again, a tiny amount, you've taken it out of the horn, you take um, between 50 and 100 grams. So in fact, the size of a ping pong ball, that amount, which you rhythmically stir in warm water and you spray over one hectare. So again, this is not substance, this is force. Um, and, and I think that those of you who, anybody who has ever done it and seen the results can, will know how potent in fact it is. So we have the preparation 500 with this one. Um, which is building up the humus layer and why to me I think this is so so important because in our world today with the conventional farming this humus layer has been completely depleted with conventional farmers with poise you have with poisons and fertilizers chemical fertilizers you end up with no humus layer at all so you you you're killing the earth um, and this is where the living is. So, so particularly important um, what a biodynamic farmer needs to do is to, do, is to create and to improve this layer, to make it bigger and bigger. And in fact, on a biodynamic farm, it should not be that thin little strip. It should be much, much bigger than that. Um, the other thing that's also so important for me with the with the um, with this verse is that uh, it talks about the purpose of a biodynamic farm, the ultimate purpose, and that is to spiritualize the earth and to prepare it for for the future incarnation. That ultimately is is our task, and I think that's beautifully beautifully spoken of in this verse just to remind us gently what in fact are we doing it gives a picture of our farm but it reminds us also that in fact what we are doing in the same way as humans we preparing ourselves or we, we preparing things for for a new world we are doing it with the farm with our farm and the earth as well and then um I want to share another reason why we do what we do. Um, so one is to prepare ourselves, for, prepare the earth for the future incarnation, but the other one is also to prepare us as humans so that we can in fact think. And uh, this is a quote uh, that Steiner gave, which is also quite famous to, to Ehrenfried Pfeiffer when he asked why it's so hard to, to understand these spiritual concepts. 
and he said that nutrition as it is today does not supply the strength necessary for manifesting the spirit in the physical life. A bridge can no longer be built from thinking to will and action, thinking, feeling, and willing. Food plants no longer contain the forces people need for this. So there we go, a huge task for biodynamic farmers to provide biodynamic food. We should all be eating biodynamic food so that we can, we can start to think. And we can do what this, what this verse expects of us. Thank you. Sure, thank, thank you, Wendy. I'm not actually sure where to, what questions to ask. It's a lot for me to process. So I'm going to pause and just see if there's any questions from, from our, our colleagues and friends here. So if anyone has a question to ask on this part, um, now might be a good time to just raise your hand or just let me know. Israel has got his hand up. Um, Wendy, thank you, a wonderful presentation. I'm just, um, maybe I missed something, but what about the fourth verse? Or did you touch on that a little? No, can I didn't. Say, can you say something about the, any way in which the fourth verse might illuminate something regarding biodynamic farming? Well, as the fourth verse in a way uh, for the farm or for, for what we are doing kind of again tells us what, how it all started and where we are going in a way. Huh? So um, it, it's, it's a sort of a rounding off maybe. Um, and it would be something that one, I mean, what, something I didn't uh, mention before, and thanks, Cyril, I'm, I'm thinking of that now, is um, that these verses can, it would, it's wonderful. I know, I know I do, and I think other biodynamic farmers do as well, to have something to, to say while one is doing a particular task or a, a task. So um, while I am stirring the preparations for an hour, while I'm putting the compost preps into the compost heap to have something to say, a kind of a prayer in a way, or a verse. And I think these are absolutely wonderful to be able to say. Um, and particularly that last one. Um, if I also always think of myself, I mean, there are times on a farm, mostly you're just too exhausted or, or um, stressed to do to 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 stop and stare but there are moments where one just stops and is absolutely overwhelmed with the beauty and the wonder of nature and i think at that time this this last verse would be something one could say how else do you use it oh, hey, there you go grant's got a question Yes, uh, it might be something for a bit later, but Wendy, you have this process uh, for, me for measuring the strength of the soil, where you mix the soil in water and then you uh, somehow get it to come onto something like blotting paper and you get a circular picture. Um, I think it's something to do with what they call crystallization. I don't know if you know that or can say anything about that? Yes, sure. Um, so uh, this was a, a method that was developed by Colisco together with Rudolf Steiner. Um, and what it is, it's called chromatography. So not Sorry. blotting paper, but, but filter paper, where you, we, a picture, where you, you put it through a, a process and you, you have a picture forming. And um, you, can, you can learn to read the picture and it can give you an idea of the life forces, whether something is alive or something is dead and how alive. And so, for example, the biodynamic preparations, those are probably the most easiest one can, can see the quality. So it's a kind of a qualitative test in terms of these biodynamic forces, um, which you can see from the pictures. Yeah, um, there are different, different methods. There's crystallization, there's chromatography, there are different, different ways of doing it, but basically they all 
uh, form. I think Avis, who is here, has done some of that as well. And um, yeah, we actually were thinking of, of with Briar and Michael doing a workshop where this where some chromatography would be done as well but because of COVID that never happened but it might come still. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Farming? No we can't hear you. I, th I think there's something Good. that I can add. No noise right. unmuted. No let Avis go it's fine. Okay, uh, and that is to do also with this last verse, the, 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 the words of the, the, the shepherds. Um, oh, how does it go? In Sorry. warm our hearts. In, it, it, in the, yeah. yeah. So shepherding and herding has got a particular soul perception of looking at something from the holistic point of view. You're not looking at, at a number of cattle or you're not looking at a number of sheep but you're actually shepherding you are or you're herding you you're watching the 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 organism go through different processes and all the different varieties of activities that are, are going on through the generations and uh seeing the, the the activity of the male and the female so it's such a reflection of of a human um, organism as well is is looking at the at, at a herd of cattle rather than individuals so there's something that for me is is very um, special about shepherding um, and it, it does if you think of Mandela and Thabo Mbeki and so the people that w they spent certain uh, years of their lives herding and what they gained from that um, so there's something yeah I just wanted to just add that to Cyril's question. Yeah. Yeah, can I just say, because we're on the topic of that fourth verse, okay. perhaps in the context of a farm, someone who knows about farming can say something about light and warmth, because obviously this fourth uh, verse also brings this issue of the polarity or the light and the warmth, light mm. that gives light. And so I imagine light and warmth are very important in farming. So I just wondered if that could yield any insight. So Wendy, I don't know if you can comment on light and warmth. Um, in the farming. Yeah, part. I suppose, um, sorry, did somebody want to say something? Yes. Yeah, I suppose, um, I mean, light and warmth is particularly linked to the metabolic limb system, um, which is the, the above ground happening, which is the beginning of the, of the, the foundation stone, the verse, um, where you are, where the warmth, where the astral world is working, where the warmth is required and light is required for ripening and fruiting. And um, I mean, with the end verse having to do with that, it's, 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 a, it's a circle. It's a, it's, it comes together. It joins up. And the last verse kind of, kind of links everything again in a way. And Caroline says, no, Caroline had her hand up. Where's yeah. Caroline? Here I am <laughs> <laughs> with you. Wendy, that was remarkable. Thank you so much. Can you speak something about the spirit of the elements, how they hear the Christ and presumably working through the day and with the elements and the seasons, you must come quite close to touching this realm of perception as farmers. Yes, absolutely. And um, when I think of the, the compost preparations, that's when I think of these. And um, throughout the foundation stone verse, there are moments where it's kind of touched on that. So let's just quickly go into the 
the compost preparations, which are different plants, usually flowers, but different plants that have been um, harvested and um, put through a process um, either in, a, in an animal organ or in some vessel and placed underground for six months or a year and then lifted again and then once again at just a tiny amount one gram in a huge big compost heap is just inserted not mixed in and just inserted and in a way um, the way that I see it is that what, what one is doing there is you are creating you are placing an organ an organ of perception into that compost heap mm -hmm. and um, making your farm sensitive this idea of, of being sensitive is something that Rudolf Steiner speaks about a lot you are sensitizing the earth you are sensitizing yourself you're sensitizing the earth you're bringing to life all these spiritual forces and and um, the the elemental beings are you become aware of them you they are there they are working you are you are bringing them to life and um, in throughout the 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 ver the the foundation stone verse these particular words practice spirit recollection practice spirit mindfulness practice spirit vision these three points those for me are the are the ones that come to mind when i'm putting the compost preps into the compost heap thank you so caroline i, I could add something to that and also what cyril said about the light and someone else speaking about the elementals it being um, hearing things. Uh, if one, I've been very sensitive about the the hearing um, from from the very beginning of this project of of getting this book together. Um, I know that Bronwyn asked, "Do you have to say it out loud?" And Estelle also brought another perspective that if your etheric voice is there, it doesn't have to be allowed. But now on the Monday rhythm, which, um, and I, I'd be interested to know if Wendy uses the daily rhythms as well as the, as the verse, as another question. But on today's rhythm, um, it was light, light divine or godly light, whichever one wants to say, light divine Christ's son. And then before Steiner speaks about that, because he only speaks about the elementals on the Monday. He never mentions them on any other day in the whole verse, only on the Monday, which for me is something to think about. He says here, we imprint it in such a way, light divine Christ's son, that we specially relate to it to the closing words, which will be spoken in their threefoldness once more tomorrow how this light divine, the Son of Christ, shine both so that like shining suns, they can be heard. These shining suns can be heard by from east, west, north, and south. To this light divine and this Son of Christ, we relate especially the closing words, which were spoken on the first day, which was the introduction to the foundation stone, before the start of the week. The spirits of the element hear it from east, west, north, south. May human beings hear it. So this idea of hearing the light and hearing the sun and hearing the light divine, uh, for me, is such a special um concept if anyone would like to say anything about that what what part does hearing play in in the farming wendy well um 
I also think that the hearing is is different to the hearing through our ears, but it's it's a it's a it's a, a kind of a spiritual hearing. It's a perceiving. But I'm, I need to just say here that when Jeanne was still alive, um, she did sit, come to me and say it's very important that you speak out aloud to the spiritual being. So she felt it was important that one actually has to walk around the farm and talk out aloud mm. to them. Um, but yeah, I just put that as a as a as a question. Thank you. More than a statement. There's something I could add to that. There was a, a, a dissertation done by uh, Paula Spiegel on the effect of eurythmy and music, actually music sound on plants and on the farm. And, um, and evidently there at the, the Gertianum, there was the lady that had done some experiments with eurythmy and whether the plants could pick up the, the effect of eurythmy and a hill, a, a, an L particularly would make the plants grow very long and high. And if you did a B over the seeds, then the plants would be very contained and tightly growing tightly together. So there is, there is a receptivity that the, 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 that the earth has, that the elements have, that the sentientness of the of the all the the organisms, I would say the microorganisms and the um, and the vibrations and the uh, which we're now talking about and frequencies and waves and so on, all hears this because it's sound. And sound is creative, mm -hmm. and so you, you are with with the voice um, or and with your rhythm, you are creating, as well. They can hear that. And, you know, everybody knows if you talk to trees, they grow well. I mean, that's just a common, common knowledge. Go, mm. Gardeners talk. <laughs> Thank you. Someone else have a, a question? I just uh, want to mention, I do remember reading an article that uh, somebody said uh, from, the, from the sound of a bird, he could tell which season of the year it was, which I think is quite clever. Mm. Mm. Interesting. So we need to broaden our concept of, of, of hearing. I mean, when you hear a son, when you hear and... Uh, I mean, one hears what is the harmony of the spheres, you know, uh, what is all that? How, how much do we still have to go? Um, men may hear it or human beings may hear it. And then um, when Machil translated the, the foundation stone verse, he said, no, it's not may men hear it. It's men may hear it. So, apparently if if you're german and martin could could check this out with me that you could say it in either way may men or may humans hear it and men may hear it in other words it's possible the one is an an invocation and the other one is like a possibility and what is it that they may hear what is this it is it this the speaking of each of the three hierarchies the resounding from the heights to the depths, the encircling round, the east from the east to the west, from the depths to the heights. Is this, is this what people are being asked to hear or what is it that, that men may hear? So those are questions from the foundation stone that I have. So that might be a good question to ponder. Is there, is there a response? Uh, maybe I can add something again here. So if we have, if we think of the movements of the planet Venus, who takes eight years to make five loops, and that then Venus then um, rules the five petaled um, flowers, the plants that have got five petals, that have got flowers with five petals, like roses, for instance, that every, they, they, they go in a circle in five before they repeat themselves. So this is a Venus principle. And the plants can hear 
these forces, I mean, they, are, you know, they respond to, is that not a form of hearing? Mm. Thank you. Yes, I would also like to um, like to say is that one should maybe not um, limit our concept of what hearing actually means. Um, hearing can also be the inner voice, the inspiration coming to you. It might not be just the, the, the pure physical organ. Um, is it the message that one suddenly understands or Oh, I've heard, oh, I get it, one would say in modern language, I think. Um, that is the way I would, at the moment, like to understand it. It, it leaves so much more open. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm able to, to work better with that. And just to, to go back to the, to the um, last verse of the Foundation Stone, I find it um, beautiful the way the way it's been linked to the biodynamic but at the turning point point of time for me is you could also think of it the people who have now decided in their farming to to change over to to biodynamic then the spirit light will it comes to you they've they've found a message they've they've understood there is there is more behind this whole principle um, and the, the daylight radiance, that, that is just, just wonder, wonderful, that it, it, it glows into the human soul. That is also, for me, an, an understanding element, um, glowing, also having the warmth, and into the simple shepherd's hearts. That, I mean, aren't we all simple shepherds in one way or the other? Um, the element of huma humility is there also in front of this, this great wonder of nature. Um, and I just love it, enlighten our heads or what, that, that's the version I have. Um, all of the, the cosmic uh, intelligence that is offered. It's like a prayer, enlighten, give me all these messages that I can work with it. Um, the fourth verse is just to me in, in any way where you apply it, um, it is so rich. It doesn't really matter where you are coming from. Um, it, it, it says so much, you can interpret it into, into each um, element or each um, profession if you want to. Yeah, mm -hmm. thanks. Thank you. There, sorry, there was another thing and that is that the, um, the agricultural course was given in 1924. So this was close to, it was after the, the um, the, the, the foundation stone had been given and uh, it was towards the end of his life. Um, and so it's understandable that, that so much wisdom went into this agricultural course. It is so complete. Um, if one thinks that it was the, at sort of that, that stage of his life, just something to think about. Mm -hmm. I I have a thought. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Caroline? Um, I'm part of a Gertian observation group, and we were led by um, people who, who are very sensitive in tracking and in the bush. And we had a practice where we had to um, sit very still with ourselves and come to know your own what they called your own base note at that moment. So it was a bit like finding balance in the soul and stillness towards practicing, towards um, yeah, schooling oneself. And then you couple it by going to a, a place in nature. And the best is if you do this daily for, and you, you sit in, a chosen place and you come to stillness and you sense the base note of that place and when you say that to know yourself you have to go to the world and it was unbelievable in practicing this that people's questions that they'd had about nature 
um, that may have lasted for months previously, when they sat in that place, in that stillness, and coming to the place's base note, nature just came with answers to their questions. Mm. It was, it was remarkable. So, I mean, it's human soul, know ourselves, but it's in, the, in these practices that we discover ourselves with the world. So that's a kind of hearing, I think. Thank you. No, thank you, Caroline. That's, that's a lovely example. Um, I'd like to, to just ask Wendy the two closing questions before her lights go out, <laughs> just to wrap up her segment, and then we can carry on with our own you know, reflections and discussions. But Wendy, I wanted to maybe just ask if you, because you obviously work with the verse in many ways. One on the farm, as you say, and you read it as you do in the preparation, and I'm sure it sounds like in your, your own journey and that. But would you have any advice on, especially someone who's new to the verse, on how to work with it, how to start finding our way with it? Does that make sense? I suppose, yeah, I wanted to, I mean, on a farm, one is, wor one is working all the time. You are doing things pretty much all the time and the verse sort of comes to me the verse really came alive when I was when I was reciting it while doing something while doing something spiritual while doing something biodynamic um, and maybe um, the idea of this idea of rhythm because when you're doing something biodynamically there's always rhythm involved and a very important aspect of this verse is the rhythm it is a verse after all and the rhythm the rhythm of the ideas and the rhythm of the sound and everything and um that that one the explicit doing something rhythmically um to me, that, that worked, that really, really came alive. So I suppose I would give that kind of advice. I mean, what Caroline was talking about was, was also in a way a kind of a rhythm, um, being quiet and working with oneself. So that's, I hope that answers that question, Talana. And there's a kind of a, also, in this this rhythm there's a there's a mystery there in rhythms there's a deep deep mystery and 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 a strength a, a, a very powerful powerful strength in rhythm um and of course everything in farming is about rhythm it's the the cycles the seasons everything do and then of course we bring in the biodynamics which is also a rhythm and um if i can give an example here Sorry, we're running out of time, but I'll give a quick example. Something that we did at, at um, Farm Natura, the, uh, uh, the rhythmic extracts, which is the, the extracts that are used in the Dr. Hauschka products and in the Vala remedies, where the, the, whole, the whole remedy is based on rhythm, where you take the plant through rhythmic cycles of cold and um, cold and warmth, heat and uh, darkness and light, um, morning and evening, etc., and it goes through a long process of rhythm. And in the end, you have a very, very powerful extract or tincture which works in a totally different way, but works very powerfully. So this idea of the rhythm is 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 really important. Sorry to go on a bit there. No, it's it's um it's very useful. I'm gaining that knowledge about the rhythm. So maybe then just to, to end off is what verse or line stands out for you or has personal significance and why? Yeah, I suppose I did um, speak about it a bit. Um, the, the middle verse, the one um, spirit mindfulness, mm -hmm. the one which links to the, the rhythmic system of the farm, the humus layer. Just because I, I am so aware of the critical, 
danger that the world is in. Um, the farming world with all these conventional farms just just doing away with this humus layer and how important, how very, very important this, this, this development of a humus living soil a layer is for the future of, of, of us, for the future of humanity. So I, I suppose I'd have to say that that one would be, I would, I would, I would recite that verse with great urgency. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for your thank time. You. You're welcome to, to stay or go. I know with your electricity, that's whatever you need to do. But we can open again back to the floor for more questions. And um, maybe Wendy can stay until the lights go out, as we say. <laughs> but are there any other questions or comments? We have had some illness says how beautifully alive the foundation verse has become looking with biodynamic eyes so all encompassing mm. and Hannah also said that each verse starts with a call to the soul of man and what follows ends with a call that the spiritual being perceive what was given and now we need to hear it as well I think that was a bit earlier in the conversation but yes, if anyone has any questions or comments, further um, thoughts, please just I raise could your still hand. Say some, yes? I could still say something regarding the hearing. Because I think hearing on the spiritual level, we must uh, probably, maybe, move away from any ideas which we normally have about hearing. And I think, you know, if you look at the previous class lessons, you can see that um, the imagination goes with seeing but uh, then it is perceive the I can't remember now in the third class lesson so the hearing goes the hearing lesson goes with perceiving and i think what uh, caroline just talked about this base note is to me a real step in this direction so that you try to hear your own base note obviously that's not an outer sound in that regard you identify it inwardly and to me hearing uh, in, the, in, the, in this inspirational sense, seems to have to do a lot with intervals for me also. For example, you can hear a disc, discord, in, you know, discord, where some, some two sounds do not go well together. And so and you could basically try and teach your own feeling to express feelings in the terms of intervals. I feel now like a quint, for example, like, or I feel like an octave. Or feel like a septime or something. You're with me. You practice these kind of things, so you can start expressing your feeling life with the help of sound qualities, basically, because it seems sound is much more related to feeling than our typical thoughts. Mm -hmm. So then you can try and experience inwardly. Do I really feel like a harmonious sound at this moment or in this nature environment? Or does it feel there's something jarring and so on? So that could be a starting point to develop a new, new sense of hearing, so to speak. And, and Caroline, um, w when you had your bass note, did you actually uh, express it out loud or was it an inner experience? And when you heard the bass note of the, of the land around you, could you could you sing it for the land or was it an inner experience i i'd say it's more an inner experience it's a bit like rudolf stein has told you to look at the color blue in the sky and you look and you look and you look until you don't see the blue anymore but you get this this bass note of piety so it's it's that kind of Did you hear that? Yeah, we did. You're mm. muted. Thank you. <laughs> um, there was a question asked about are there any courses offered on the biodynamic farming? 
And I think we might have lost Wendy, but she said yes, if you contact the Biodynamic Association. Um, I'll put the links in the in the show notes for, for that. So any, I, would, I would just love to know how Neville um, heard about this, about the evening, a little bit about Neville. We don't know anything about, I don't know anything about him. <laughs> Is he still there? Yes, I I got to know about uh, the anthroposophy through Novalis in Cape Town, in Weinberg, in Cape Town. And I received their emails, and, and that's why I respond, and that's how I responded to, to the link. Well, we're so happy that to, to have you here. Thank you for coming. Grant, did you have a question? Yes, I just wanted to mention that one of our anthroposophical colleagues in Switzerland was calling for an anthroposophical scientific uh, research into the fact that the gases which come from cattle and cows, uh, which are blamed for climate, are not the same as industrial. And I think that's probably quite a big a serious project for the future. Yeah, it's a pity when you didn't hear that one. <clears throat> uh, uh, sorry. Yeah, for, for those that are tuning in maybe to the podcast from overseas, South Africa has a problem with electricity and we are in load shedding, which means that we, we have quite a few hours without any electricity and Wendy's just gone into load shedding. So she has mm -hmm. unfortunately left us for the evening. <laughs> um, so Jelana? are there any other questions? Yes? Jelana? Go Good on, maybe write, write it to her. Send her a message that she gets it. I find that a very interesting uh, contrast because, mm -hmm. because of all this gas and uh, exchanging the, um, the, uh, the motor vehicles that are using alternate um, energies, I want to say, or, or properties, um, that that might be interesting to see where that takes them. Thank you. Yes, I will get the message to her. Are you, are you still on record or have you dropped yes. up the recording? Well, then yes. Wendy will hear, she'll hear Grant's question, won't she? Because yes. it's still on record here. So is there anything else around the, the topic? Otherwise, I can actually stop the recording. Um, next week, we are actually going to be speaking with Cyril Kutsia. <laughs> and we are looking, I don't even know if I could explain what we're going to be looking at, but there, in Noy's book, there is a diagram of a beautiful drawing that Cyril has done. And we are going to be exploring that and all the elements that it touches on. So... Looking forward to that very much. There's also, you can get a copy of Noe's book if you would like, just get in touch with us. Um, there are copies printed for members, but otherwise we can send you the, the PDF, the electronic version. And there's a lot on the actual, the website that will you know be attached to this um, podcast that goes out. But if there's any other burning comments to end this part, otherwise I'll stop the recording and we can carry on with our conference. No, so super, we'll, we'll see you all next week for the next installment of Exploring the Foundation Stone. Thank you.